Now we're in phase three. We have one more phase after this, by the way, but phase three is all about 13 to 14 years old. And this should be the transition to 11 versus 11. So we've been doing 5v5 basically up to this point. Maybe some other stuff, probably not, but it's possible. And now we're going into 11v11. There will be a transition. This is worlds apart. But now we're trying to plug and play where we have a bunch of skilled players and we put them in positions that they're the best in and they'll have an alternate position as well. But that would be the objective of what we want to achieve in this phase. And this is the final zone or part of the zone one before we get to zone two, which is phase four, which you're going to find out shortly, okay? Um, there are situations of late bloomers. So if my son is a late bloomer and he's not ready to make this jump, then we don't make the jump. If I don't feel, and or we, we don't feel that he's ready to make this jump to 11 versus 11 because he's physically not ready, technically not ready, tactically not ready, then we won't make the jump. Yes, I do understand game experience is important, but I don't want to set my child up to fail. I want him to be successful. So that's why if he needs time, we'll give him time. This is a whole new experience. This is a whole new ball game going from 5 aside to 11 v 11. Patience and time is critical in achieving success with this. Okay, so let's look at the objectives. So the objectives would be to develop 11 v 11 play with strong other players. Like I talked before about having a strong team, this is now the moment to do so, okay? Tactical variation training. So an example would be like an inverted fullback. Like that's tactically a tactical variant, okay? Focus on tempo and speed of play. So this would be like two touch. So touch play, touch play, touch play. They would start specific Position specific training. So if he plays right wing, we'll do position specific training for right wing. Uh, we want extremely high competitive matches so he's constantly being pushed. And of course, continuing on the concept of having the level to play at least two years up, whether that's full time or part time, this is a great indicator of where we're at. And it just depends on how he's able to achieve these things. Okay. And, you know, just a reminder for myself and for anybody. This is all a process. It is all a journey. There's going to be so many ups, or I should say there will be few ups and so many downs. Like, and it's just overcoming these things, and especially at puberty, because this is on the border, if not puberty at this age. So you're going to have kids that just sprout, and you're going to have kids that stay very small until they're 16 or 17 years old, and that's just part of the business. So my son may be tall. He may be small. He may be physically gifted or not. We have to... Um, we have to play the cards that were dealt and we have to adapt evolve and grow and like I'm 5'9 5'10 like I'm not a tall dude my brother and my dad on the other hand are both 6'3 6'4 so I'm going to assume that my son will not be that tall so we'd have to assume again roughly the same height obviously there's things that happen but that's just you know assume the same and you know he's going to have to adapt and like I said, this could take days, this could take weeks, this could take months, this could take years, and it's all gonna really depend on his mental maturity, and that's why all those challenges and setbacks we wanted to put in front of him early on help him overcome these things along the way, and will help him adjust quicker is really the key thing. So hopefully it's days, weeks, maybe months. Like, for example, when a new coach goes into a pro environment, at a minimum, just to see like the, the evolution of his concepts, on five days a week of training, sometimes six or seven plus matches, is three months minimum. They all talk about it. It takes a minimum of three months to start seeing the, the process actually evolve and take uh, maturity. Okay, so the more adversity that my child has to overcome now, again, will either reinforce or destroy, destroy is not the right word, or take away from that dream. So it's either going to reinforce the decision to want to do that or to step back from it. So some potential setbacks and challenges that he may have to overcome, especially during this phase, would be not starting, lack of playing time, injuries, different positions than what he wants to play, and adjusting to playing with more physical players by playing two years up. And what's interesting is four out of the five are player and coach driven. So that means it's between the player and the coach to have those conversations. And you know, I would follow that up with my son and say, okay, son, how bad do you really want this to be successful? How bad do you want it? And, you know, at this phase, really starts the, the next level trend here of what are you willing to sacrifice? And that's the question he needs to answer. And he may not be willing to sacrifice anything. And if he's not, then I'm going to say, hey, 
it's okay, but this might not be the career path for you. If you're willing to sacrifice some of these things, which I'm going to talk about in about three seconds, then, you know, we can seriously consider this on your career path, okay? And I think this is really undervalued, especially in this country, because I think most people are average, and that's not a bad thing, by the way, but, like, to achieve what we're talking about achieving with my son with this with this playbook is, you know, you're exceptional. Like, you're not average, you're exceptional. So, like, what is, what, here are some ideas that we'd be willing to sacrifice to make it happen. Obviously, first one being that he's not going to public or private school unless there's something that's an extremely good fit, but right now there isn't, in my opinion, but let, let's see in the future, right? And we would do homeschool or virtual school. And some ideas that you'd have to overcome challenge-wise is friends, hanging out with certain people that are motivated like you and not just, you know, everybody else. Leisure time, what do you do in your spare time? Are you just playing video games? Are you on your phone on, on any of the social media threads? Are you actively trying to progress your career? So studying content, material, watching games, educating yourself. Like there's a whole bunch of things you could be doing off the field at home that doesn't even include touching a ball. Um, video games I already talked about. Social life, are you willing to give up the normal social life? And this is probably the biggest one, honestly, if not tied for top, diet and hydration. Most people aren't willing to take this risk in terms of changing their diet and nutrition. Hopefully you've done this well in advance before this phase, but this is where you're gonna start seeing the fruit of the process. If you've been doing the right things or you're willing to start doing the right things, that will help accelerate the growth. If you're not, your player's performance will suffer. My son's performance will suffer. And really, diet and nutrition is huge. And this is like cliche to say, but it's true. Like, think of like the gasoline for a car. You're not going to put in bad gasoline or like the wrong gas. So like if you have a Ferrari, you're not going to put in diesel gas. You're probably going to need premium gas. Vice versa. For yourself, are you going to eat junk food and fast food and sodas all the time? That's low level food. You need to put in stuff that's going to optimize your performance. And... Here's a quick example, but there's a person I work with and she works with professional athletes all the time. So she's giving me full detailed plans of what a player, an athlete should eat, which includes two serving of carbs per meal, one serving of protein and one serving of veggies. And this is all healthy, not like, you know, fast food stuff that that's not healthy. Okay. And really what the point of this is, the player should start understanding that everything is earned, not given, especially moving forward. And that, you know, sacrifices and setbacks are a part of the journey. Like you have to deal with that. And you're either going to you're either going to overcome it or you're gonna step back and be like, this isn't for me and I need a career change. So is my son willing to take out soda, fast food, and sugary products to you know optimize performance and to fuel the body? You know, maybe one cheat meal a week is fine, but other than that, or cheat day, I guess, but other than that, it should be focused and driven on earning what we want. If you really want to be a pro, you have to earn this by doing the right things off the field as well. And I want to quickly touch on this for phase three as well, which would be why should the player play up? Why should my son play up? Great question. And I think it's great for a kid to be able to play their age. Like, it's great, okay? But if you're excelling at your age group, it's time for you to be pushed and pushed up and to play up and to be challenged, right? Like, that's why I said, like, even younger, play up, play up, play up. Because you're playing with better players, stronger players, faster players, more intelligent players. You have to survive first and then thrive in that environment, which will take time. But even if it's just training, like, you're going to be pushed in a different way than you would just by playing your age group. And, again, let's use the best players in the world. They're professionals at 16, 17 years old, 15 years old. They're not, they're playing against grown men way earlier than you are, or the typical American player is one, but two, they're getting first team training experience probably one to two months, three months before they even play one game. So they're already getting that experience in training. And it's just, again, having you overcome challenges. Like we have to put you on the path, at least for my son, on the path of, the highest chance of success and playing up if it's not full time at least you know twice or three times a week so he's being pushed and that's going to be you know a different determining factor with that 
And like parents, especially like for me as my son's parent, I have to remember and you have to remember that this is my son's dream. This is not my dream. This is his dream. So if he wants this, he has to put in the work. He has to be committed. I'm there to support him for sure all day. But it's about him achieving what he said he wants to do. So go earn that. Am I going to force him? No. I'm going to help him. I'm going to guide him. But I already have my life. My son needs to go create his life. I don't need to create a life for myself. I have mine already. So it's time that he goes to make his. And this is where like the love of the game is either going to prevail or fail. So he's either going to step out or he's going to continue to advance forward. And it's only going to intensify, honestly, from this point, 300%. It's only going to get harder. It's only going to take more on the mental grind. And you're going to have to continue, or he will have to continue to overcome setbacks, suffer more, and love the process of suffering, to be honest, and earn it. And if you don't truly love the game, my son or whoever the player is will quit. Because you have to love... And it's not just the game. You have to love the process. You have to love the journey. And you have to love suffering. Because you're going to suffer, like let's put a math equation on this, you're going to suffer probably 95% of the time. So like 95 times out of 100, you're going to be suffering versus being rewarded at the real level of football, not what you soccer teaches you and and what it's about. So just at least understand that process. And then moving forward, uh, I talked about this briefly with the the goals or the targets or objectives, but we want to see a lot more tactical variation. So once they get the concept of 11 v 11, you know, teaching them tactical variations where it's, you know, on paper, it's a 4-3-3. But then they do inverted fullback. So in the build-up phase and in possession and whatnot, they play 3-2-2-3. And then, for example, defending, you're not going to play 4-3-3 probably. You may, but you might also play 4-5-1. Or maybe you go 4-4-2. Like, there's the attacking phase. There's the defending phase. There's also phases inside those phases. And like most teams play with a 5 and 5 system. That means 5 guys that go out to attack. And then 5 guys that are ready for the counter attack if it happens. And that doesn't mean that they sit back by the box. No. That means they come up. But they're in positions to protect the team in case of a counter attack. Or to recycle the ball. And you know doing this type of stuff will help develop the tactical side of the game. And help develop the intelligence with the ability to do different roles. And understand different concepts that are only going to get more in depth, the higher level that they go. So very important. Okay, so looking at position specific training, what is it? Um, This is when, again, at this phase where a player starts focusing on one or two positions that are probably their target places to play. So right wing, nine, left wing, whatever, center back, you know, pick your position. The example I want to give here is a striker. It's probably the easiest one to relate to. So you're going to focus on that position and with position specific training what we're trying to do is hit the targets for that position like what does the player need to do in this position and the ideas would be you know for example for a number nine how to make runs and why you're making that run two would be how to play with your back to goal so maybe you're a target player and you have to play with your back to goal three would be finishing you know can you hit the bottom corner nine times out of ten and just for reference because some people ask this i'm sure What's the difference between finishing and shooting? Finishing is when you pick a spot and you hit that spot. So for example, I'm going out and I'm on the left side. I want to hit the bottom right corner. So I'm picking that corner. I'm making sure the ball hits that corner. Shooting on the other hand would be you're usually further out. It doesn't have to be, but usually further out. You're picking a side like the left side or the right side and you're hitting hard. So you're essentially sacrificing accuracy for power. Whereas finishing, you're more accurate than power. And a lot of times with shooting, you don't know where the ball is going to go. You're hoping it goes to the left into the bottom corner or top corner, but you don't know for sure. It might hit your foot slightly wrong and slice to the right. It's just part of the business. But that's the difference between shooting and finishing. Okay, so really important that you hit this topic in phase three. And this would be basically about with changes to the human body because of puberty, a lot of kids are going to go through this. A lot of changes are going to happen. So mental, 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 mental is going to be the biggest differentiating factor for kids because like what you need to understand, and this is the same thing for my son, is like to get to the next level, college or pro, the prerequisite is skill. 
th that's a given. You're not getting to the next level with skill. The higher levels that you can go to are all dependent on your mind and your ability, like the, the, the physical ability, so physical and tactical ability. Technical should be given. It's a prerequisite. You should already have that. It's now the mental side, the physical side, and the tactical side, and charisma as well, I would say, that gets you to those next steps. And it's really the mental side that's going to really push you through. So you need to make sure that the mental training is there. I actually have a course that you can download, um, which will help you with that, uh, which is called the Pro Mindset Course. If your child needs help with that, you can do it at any age. You can get it from my, my website. You can just go to my bio link on Instagram and get it. I think that will help a lot. And it, it, it's the mental side is so important for kids that want to get to the next level because they're going to have to, you know, you got two options. Move forward or step back and change your career. It's okay if you want to do that. But it's, it's not going to be easy. And then now that we're talking about 11 versus 11, one of the things that I recommend you get immediately is one of my secret files, which is called the Player's Roles and Responsibility. Um, we're calling it a document. It's like a PDF. And it breaks down what the player should be doing in every single position, by the way. So if you're a goalie, right back, left back, center mid, 10, striker, what are your objectives in the game? So like you know, attacking, defending, transition set pieces. What are your, What is your typical role in those phases as, as well as game day objectives to say, these are your targets for a game. So now you never have to go blind for your child's performance because you can know everything they need to do from my perspective that I'm giving you for that role. And I think that will help you guys make better decisions and understand, especially the game day objective. Like this is what your son needs to achieve in the game. So if he's a striker, for example, he needs to create three goal scoring opportunities. So that's either scoring to himself or getting an assist or something like that. And it's just, I think game changes. It's my secret file that I didn't share for a while, but I decided to do that. And it will really help you guys make better decisions and understand concepts about attacking, defending, transitioning, and set pieces based on your position. So if you haven't got it yet, go to my bio link on Instagram and you can download it 100% free and enjoy, man. And let's get ready for phase four.